the average person might think, how true is this story? And my answer would be that they are absolutely subjectively true. It is a true reflection of what I experienced while in a deep death coma in an altered state of consciousness while I was very ill. Are they a true reflection of some of the mysteries of the other side of life? I can't really say with certainty. I'm going to try to attempt to describe my near-death experience while I was very ill and in a deep death coma. This is an almost impossible task as one has to try to relate the strange alien multi-dimensions of the other side of life in a way that can be understood by our three-dimensional material world. You see, I found myself in a dark place and did not have the usual into the light tunnel kind of experience. I seem to have become a dense intense point particle of intelligent light energy. I had no body, but at the same time was the personality that inhabited my earthly body. I became pure, undiluted thought, It's the best way I can describe it. While I was there, I was sometimes met by a being of light, he was pure light, not a human form, but a pure point of light, who communicated with me mind to mind, like some form of telepathy. I believed at first that it was God, but later demoted it to an angel. Then this being showed me the tunnel that usually follows the near-death event. I could not see either end of this tunnel, and we were in total darkness, except for the point of intelligent light. It was an out-of-body experience. I was told that one end of this tunnel led to the light, and the other into a dark void. It was then explained to me by this being of light that this tunnel had two ends, one into the glorious light of God, and the other into the darkness of the void. Now I'd like to interject here, due to your prime question relating the judgment in the afterlife, darkness, evil, cannot invade light. One candle dispels the darkness, but light, goodness, can impact into the darkness. At first, I was taken up through the tunnel into the place of learning, like a library, into the glorious light at one end of this almost infinite tunnel. While in this light, I experienced great feelings of elation, love, and peace. Here I was shown great events that were to come to planet Earth, sometime in the future. There was a being with me all the time that I could hear but I couldn't see. It spoke with a male voice. I believed it or he is what us mere mortals refer to as God. Later I was informed that this being was not God, but a highly evolved entity, much like an angel. I was asked if I wanted to savor the moment, and I responded desperately, yes, yes, but please let me remember it after I return to life. On awakening from this experience, I found out to my dismay that I have forgotten most of it. But as years go by, more and more memories of this event bubble up out of the basements of my mind, and I have revisited this essay to update it from time to time. While this entity was speaking, I could see a panoramic view of the planet Earth, as if I was a spaceman observing the Earth from the window of a spaceship. I could see the Earth revolving in all its sublime beauty and stopping time and time again over each country and continent with a message from the great voice of infinity. The voice that I had first took as God was not pleased with what was happening to our planet and kept referring to humanity in the terms of mere mortal man. I am displeased with you. I cannot remember why he was displeased. While this unseen being of pure light was speaking, the earth was revolving and stopping at intervals over each continent, in turn where a warning message was given to each spot. It seems that if humanity does not change their attitude towards each other and the life-giving planet, some direct intervention would come and free will will be limited. The frustrating part is that I could not retain all that was said to this mere mortal man by this being while I was with him viewing the earth. I do, however, clearly remember two warnings. One, that a cataclysmic event would start from the Indian subcontinent. The other, that the Middle East crisis would not be solved by the peacekeeping efforts of man and the divine direct intervention would eventually come to earth sometime in the future because of the unbelievable misconduct that some mere men were perpetrating and directly responsible for on earth destruction of the planet, like Katrina or a tsunami happened. It was also shown to me that we are not really judged by God, but by our own actions in life, which dictate where one starts their afterlife or eternal destiny. If all our actions had become totally bad by the end of our life, we would become a being of darkness 
and it would then become simply impossible for us to enter the light of God. Darkness cannot penetrate light. To reach this point, we would have to become a totally deprived being, with no redeemable qualities. The destiny of this type of person, by his own actions, would be banished down into this vast, deep, long, dark pit of the void, like I talked about earlier, the most remote from the love of God. I was also shown that there are degrees of punishment in the void. The punishment ranged from a gray, depressive atmosphere progressively down into utter horror, terror, hopelessness, despair, and desolation in this black darkness. I did not see any lake of fire. I, however, got the clear impression that God will one day thrust all negativity away from him into this infinite, utter, remote darkness of the deep, and there it would dissipate and be forgotten forever. There is a beautiful balance of existence. While the dark void is awful, the domain of light is so peaceful, loving, glorious, even blissful, that I can't really find adequate words in the English language to describe it. Therefore, we all have varying degrees of light in us that allow us to go into this glorious light of the Almighty. We meet an essence of God in that light at the end of the tunnel and at the end of our earthly life. God can work with that light in us, make us pure, and allow us to progress up the various levels of heaven into his eternal blissful presence of everlasting peace and joy. It is a progress of eternal learning. Then we become one with God. But we retain our unique self-awareness or our unique personalities. I mean, we retain it forever. Time as we experience it here on earth is really an illusion. Something like an infinitely stretchable or shrinkable string of elastic. Perhaps that's why some days seem to last like an eternity and others are just like moments. The end event, the end of time, will not come at some set chronological time, but when a certain set of future events synchronize, the universe is not eternal or infinite, and it has a beginning and it will have an end. Thank you for expressing your NDE, Alan. You definitely laid out some uh, cold hard truths, and I would like to know what you think. So in the comment section below, do you think Alan in his coma really experience something because it definitely hits a lot of the bases for an NDE but then again he was just in a coma so so you tell me I would love to hear your thoughts and as always I know I'm beating a dead horse but if you like share subscribe and it helps way more than you know other than that I hope you live long and live strong <laughs>